So if you can see doctor here, uh, today's my pleasure. We have uh, Dr. Madhuri Dixit, and she's a wonderful surgeon uh, from India, has a very big practice and um, very experienced eye surgeon. And she's here with her daughter here today, who is an amazing cardio Hi. surgery <laughs> fellow, right? Cardiology fellow. Cardiology yeah. fellow, fantastic. Yeah. And we're gonna work on our eyes and work on the uh, today's in and uh, Doctor, you had a question. This is a patient we just saw. Okay. And as you can see here, she had come with full thickness corneal scar from an aborted LASIK she had. Mm -hmm. And this is full thickness, very high regular stimulum, and her vision was very poor, double, triple, you can imagine. And it's full thickness. This is day one post laser plastic. Okay. So you can That's come closer. Wonderful. That's the magical thing. So you can see here, yes. this is day one post op. And again, very important, no evidence of surgery, no inflammation, no redness. The scar is still there because it's full thickness, right? That's the whole concept of plastique and mm -hmm. laser plastique. I'm correcting the cornea using corneoplastique based refraction, mm -hmm. not just chasing the scar, I'm chasing the shape. Okay. Then and what those, happens to the uh, halfway through that flap was... So it doesn't matter anymore. Not only did she have a bad aborted LASIK, she also had, they also did PRK on the West Coast okay. with her. To me, it doesn't matter. I look for potential. Mm -hmm. I look for visual potential and that's why I went straight with laser plastic, removing very little tissue. You see what we've done. And she's thrilled. And yet, nice. This is her eye surgeon to us today sending me her report. She's spherical equivalent nearly zero. Wow, very nice. So Lovely. this is what uh, all these techniques are and how these patients right. see, right? Any other patient you wanted to talk about, keratoconus or anything in your mind? No, I just want to know about the normal patient. How normal would you go? <laughs> normal how patient. Would you, how would a, a refractive surgeon go about a normal patient to Certainly. give him the best character? So let's just take patient. your daughter. Okay? okay. Can we discuss your case, daughter? Yeah, for yeah? sure. Perfect. Here she is, myopic with astigmatism. All right. Mm -hmm. Now I always look at a few things here. To me, it's not just a topography and stuff, it is measurability, stability, and normalcy. Okay. So people get scared, oh, the thickness is below 500, what can I do? That's mm -hmm. wrong. Is it abnormal? That's a, the that's a problem. Right. But right? How, how far we can go? Again, there is no such number. That's why a lot of surgeons are confused. They, I keep getting emails every day from all over the world. They keep mm -hmm. asking, what's the number? Below 520, dot now what do I do? PRK, LASIK. I'm like, that's wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are 40 techniques. Oh. Right. Cannot just have one or two techniques and decide based on what you're scared of. Do what's right for the patient. Right. Correct? So now so if I'm looking at her daughter. If the thickness is less than 500. Fine. Which procedures would you? See again, wrong question. Because okay. it's not abnormal. Someone who's five feet tall, doctor, mm -hmm. is not necessarily a dwarf. Am I right? Yeah. But you take that patient to Holland, that person, and now mm -hmm. he's shorter than most people. Right. Yeah. But that's still a normal, relatively shorter person. Are you okay? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Now you bring an 11 feet tall person that is surely a giant mm -hmm. and a 3 feet tall person is a dwarf. That is pathological. Right. So just having a corn less than 500 means nothing to me. Now let's take your daughter. Her astigmatism is with the rule. Mm -hmm. Correct? She is myopic, high myopic, has astigmatism. It's with the rule. That itself is a great normalcy. Mm -hmm. Even though the cornea is relatively thin, it doesn't matter. Already doesn't matter because everything looks normal to me. Right. See the, the corneal appearance and the topography. Right. But there's Benecam, you'll have eye trace or you'll have uh, uh, OPD. All these technologies I carry, but even if you have one of them, it's okay. Normalcy so is clinical. If you want to go for a refractive procedure on Priya, yes. how would you go? I would go laser plastic on her. Okay. Because I want a procedure where I can also regularize her cornea, mm -hmm. not cut. It's a female patient. Cutting the nasociliary nerves from any LASIK flap, something causes more dryness. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to remove too much tissue. And yet get a large ablation zone, get my myopia and astigmatism and be done. And her contact lens scars that are in the periphery all will come out. Okay. Now, let's make her 430 microns. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. Even though she still has a stimulative against the rule, everything looks normal. It's, she's not abnormal, but now I don't want to remove tissue from the cornea. Mm -hmm. I'll put an ICL in her eye. Oh. Got it? Right. Myopia. Right. If astigmatism is higher than myopia, I always like laser on the cornea because that's where it hurts. It makes mm -hmm. it perfect. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, let's make her 
64 years old with the same problem. Mm -hmm. I will go inside the eye and do a lens exchange surgery. Mm -hmm. Now let's make a pseudo faking. She comes to me like the patient who's just landed now from Europe. Cataract done with a premium lens. Mm -hmm. She's miserable. She has double, triple vision. Right. Because the cornea still has a diopter and a half against the rule of stigmatism and the lens that they put in is slightly tilted because there's zonular dialysis that I saw. I'm going to go on the cornea and correct the astigmatism. So when you do these kind of procedures uh -huh. at this age, uh -huh. and she develops cataract later, yes. is it any difficulty in calculating the power of the Well, lens? used to be, but nowadays the formulas are so accurate. And then again, with 30 years experience, I know what mm -hmm. the lens power should be. That's why they land so well in that would case. Would you advocate any multifocal lens or monofocal or bifocal lens? Whatever I feel at that time is right for her optics, absolutely. Again, the lens, I don't decide on whether she's had previous surgery. Mm -hmm. I look at the optical system. That's another big fallacy of doctors. Mm -hmm. They keep talking, calling me all the time, doctor, what lens? Mm -hmm. Wrong question. It's like asking what ingredient. Right, doctor? Mm -hmm. You should know what recipe. Yeah. What's the recipe? And then pick the right ingredient. You don't pick the ingredient not knowing the recipe. That's confusion. That's why you see the number of patients you saw today coming in. A lot of them have come because they're unhappy. And all the surgeons are excellent. A lot, lot of them are very good colleagues of ours. Mm -hmm. But they put in all these lenses without thinking of the entire optical system. Mm -hmm. So in the entire optical system, which part do you think is the most important thing to look into? Oh. As an all. ophthalmologist. The tear film? Yes. So that's a very important optical system. Your cornea regular, emetropically zero, any fuchs dystrophy, any anterior coronal irregularity, right? Mm -hmm. The lens itself, the cataract, what kind of cataract it is, how long it has blocked the vision, if it's mature PSC, PSC cataract, or a very early anterior polar cataract where patients have very little symptoms. So they'll be less inducive to any side effect. Then the retina, vitreous, if there's PVD, if there's a Weiss's ring, if there are floaters, retina itself, how pristine is the macula? Mm -hmm. So I look at everything and then I pick what lens I want. Not the only three lens that someone has in their office. There are 34 mm -hmm. lens choices. For you, doctor, internationally, there are over 80 lens choices. Right. So I pick my ingredient after I've decided my recipe. Right. Make sense? Yeah. What I'm it's seeing a lot holistic is... Holistic approach. Has to be. Yes. Because otherwise you're putting an ingredient and hoping and praying that the food tastes good. You cannot. Maybe you'll hit... Luckily, you might get some of them correct, but majority will be some compromise because does that make sense, doctor? What yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Can you put it in your own language, yeah. being a heart doctor? <laughs> uh, I think it depends on like looking at the patient as a whole before you actually tell them that okay, this is just a particular cholesterol medication which sort of fix everything. Correct, correct. Yeah. And you don't just put a stent in everybody. Right. Correct. Right. And you don't ask what stent you want, pink or blue. Right. You decide right. what's right for the patient. Right depending on their lung capacity at that time, depending on their age, right, Doc? Yeah. So being from a heart surgery point of view, that's how I want her to think, uh, especially she's going to be coming out after a fellowship. Uh, doctor, any other question, please? You know, Madal, still the question remains in ah. my mind. Yes. If we are doing something on the cornea, Yes. Uh, that will definitely affect the cataract procedure, right? Okay. The vision after a laser procedure. Yes, yes. The cataract surgery becomes, so many patients are not very happy when the cataract surgery is done. Okay. So looking at all these factors. Right. So how do we correct that? Again, what kind of laser surgery was done? Hyperopic, myopic, press biopic, astigmatism. Mm -hmm. That decides optical zone, that decides spherical aberration, that decides mm -hmm. corneal contour. Is it uh, oblate? Is it normal, prolate cornea? Mm -hmm. All those things decide the optics of the lens. Okay. Is the lens spherical aberration neutral? Is it positive? Is it negative? You see, that's the problem. Again, you're putting a lens without thinking about all this. Then it goes against the optics. Now the patients are unhappy. It's not that the lens was bad, but they didn't compensate for the cornea. So you just saw the other patient I showed you. When they have 30, 40 cut RK when they come to me, why are they so happy with cataract surgery? So all these things are taken into consideration. So I take into like consideration that... Procedures are done together, like corneal and uh, refractive never. surgery? <clears throat> never, never, right? Because each surgery has a visual impact. Right. So you never want to do a cocktail. Right. You want to wait and proceed once you see what you've done. Mm -hmm. 
also I call that GPS, right? You've seen the work on our LinkedIn, right? That's what you mean, right. Paula. GPS means, doctor, mm -hmm. what correct step to take first and what step to take second. Mm -hmm. You can't go driving this way and this way, go to dead ends all the time and turn around all the right. time. You got to know, I've got to take this direction, that will take me to that direction. Mm -hmm. So it has to be planned. Now, those are staged surgeries. Right. I call that inside out, meaning sometimes when I do cataract, I want to create hyperopia, stigmatism, because that laser pattern will remove the scar. Mm -hmm. Or I call that outside-in technique, when the cornea is unmeasurable. You should not do cataract surgery because you're being inaccurate. Mm -hmm. It's a disservice to the patient. So I always like to fix the cornea, make sure it becomes measurable and stable, mm -hmm. then enter with accuracy. Now how long you wait for the cornea? Could be six treatment? weeks, could be eight weeks. Now a lot of our patients come from all over the world, so sometimes even three months. Okay. Because to me, accuracy is so important. Right. I don't compromise. I tell them, I'm sorry, I have to have you fly back. Right. right? Okay. So normal case when you're looking, even a myope, even age changes everything. So this is all the dynamic things happening in the eye yes. uh, during the course of life. So, yes. so when you do one procedure, after a certain time, you know, the things change. Yes. So how do you handle those things? First and foremost, you have to fix it while it's there. You can't tell a patient, you know, in the next 10 years you'll have a cataract, so live with this astigmatism now. Unacceptable to me because the patient is disabled, right? What do I say? Glasses are... Not accessories, what are they, doctor? <laughs> crutches. <laughs> <In> the crutches. <laughs> so again, please, glasses contacts have their role. Mm -hmm. After surgery, if someone doesn't reach the goal, for some reason, anatomical or whatever, yes, you need glass contacts. But to give that to somebody without fixing the problem, yeah. I disagree with that because to me, vision is a tremendous sense we have, the most precious. Right. Giving people suboptimal vision and telling them to go through life, I think is improper. Especially for us as eye doctors, we yeah. should be fighting. You know, why should I let her leg be with polio when I can fix it? At least I can try to fix it. Right. Why should I have a drag her leg all her life? So I keep saying this, you know, a doctor needs to fight. Yes. Right? So it doesn't matter how much the error, like you're seeing here, all these patients. So even a normal patient to me is intense. Okay. Intense. So I look at all these aspects and then here's what I do. I don't give options. I have thought through what is needed for yes, the patient. That's very important. If you give options to the patients, then you are, the patients also get confused and you are more confused. But, but doc, also look at it this way. Again, correct me doctor if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. It's so unfair to give the patient options. How do they know what to select? They'll have to go to Google, ask a family member, ask a neighbor. It doesn't matter or relate to them. We are right. the people who are responsible, should be responsible. Yes for what we are doing. Yeah. So I look at the patient, I come up with a plan, I'm never budging from that. I'm, that's it, that's what I want. And thank God, that's how it works here. Right. All these patients flying here without advertising, without schmoozing, no playing around with anything. And you can see the intensity, the time. Oh, it's very inspiring, like, you know, it has changed the way I look at my practice now. It's a lot of food for thought for me. It's a problem. What things I can change in my practice. First of all, be intolerable. <laughs> intolerable. No you matter how difficult. Have, like, uh, you should probably have algorithms for every patient scenario. You know, this is the <laughs> step, then this is what you need to do next. And this uh, is what the clarity do. should be there. It is there. You know, doctors are so intelligent. Doctors are so talented, right? Um, yeah. If not, how would you have passed all these exams? Correct? Yeah. It's basics. Yeah. So, yes. but I feel somewhere there's a loss of pride and loss of commitment. I feel a patient should be so comfortable the minute you walk in because you take over. The patient's pain. you forget that why you do what you do. There you go. So there you go. That's what uh, it's right. very important to just pause for some time and think. Yes. And this has given what do me I say? a lot of, <laughs> right? a lot of insights. Yeah. Like how many hours? How much time have you spent together today? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a lot. And, uh, Priya, okay, so and Priya, in your, uh, in your uh, cardiology practice, yeah, how many, how much time do you spend with the patient? Probably 10, 12. And that's on a timer, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what I call that? It's like drinking 60 glasses of wine in a day. You throw up in the evening. 
take one glass, twirl it in the yes, sunset, February, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And get intoxicated by 5 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. You go home like, wow, another amazing day. Yeah. Well, how do doctors go home, Priya? Oh, they're all done. They're, they don't want to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> but so anyway, that's a small thing, but that's how I look at it, really. It is so gratifying. You know, when these patients, their surgeons call me from this one from LA, the other one today morning from Australia. It's so gratifying because they're back in their life. All these videos that you'll see that my staff and visiting doctors put up, it's it's a way of inspiring our profession that this is so easy. Yes, mm -hmm. it's not easy. <laughs> For you, it's easy. It's not easy. Everyone can't do this. Yeah, it's so magical. It's a, it's a you are the blessed ones, I think. Many oh. people should learn from you. Any doctor should learn it's from you. It's an honor. You know, a lot of you come here, bring your families. That's itself is a privilege because, again, that boils down to what, doctor? Privilege. Yes. Mm -hmm. Privilege, right? Mm -hmm. Because once you feel that, see, the thing is, as a doctor, we should always feel. That the patient's trust is what we have to repay in the currency. That's the most invaluable currency. They trust. Yeah. We should yeah. pay back in performance and care. Right. Yeah. Money is in between. It happens. Right. But that part, if we forget, how much money do you need yeah. at the end? Right. Priya? And the time given to the patient. That's the most important. And who's yes. blessing you? Who's all the time praying yeah. for you? Yeah. You know, today morning I got a text. Can you believe it from a patient from Pakistan? Oh. Dr. Gulani, I pray for you every day. Imagine waking up in the morning, 5.55 right. a.m., I wake up and I go, oh, wow. Yeah. And he just flew his nephew to me, who's a surgeon in New York. We did Dr. Usman, remember? I just said, sir, imagine, texts like these. Yesterday, I got a text from a patient in North Carolina. Doctor, you have spoiled us. Mm -hmm. we, we have to wait in other offices. So, yeah. Yeah. those are my feedback. I'm right. so fortunate and we are so yes. uh, privileged as you said. So Very. Uh, I, I think I need to step forward, one more step to put a little bit. <coughs> yes. You go I back. a little bit because uh, both my children, they opted for cardiac surgery uh -huh. and not for ophthalmology. So I was taking the <laughs> thing. Uh, little, she blames it on her. <laughs> yeah. okay. So I feel like yeah. even if I don't do many I'm very much, you know. No. <laughs> you go back and everybody's scared yes. of you now. Because, <laughs> see, every patient is such an opportunity. Yeah, it's it's a blank canvas. Yes. Anybody can do a cataract, LASIK. Yes. I said, come on, that's yes. kindergarten skills. Yeah. I want people to fight higher. Right. Even take a normal case and make it into a Mona Lisa. Right. Why just paint walls on the weekend? Make a Lisa fresco. Nice. Right. And then you feel so nice. Right? You'll be putting stents in people's hearts, right? Yep. So feel so nice about the stents. That's my stent. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> the color matches. <laughs> but <coughs> really, these are important things because otherwise, it gets boring, yes. mundane. Yes. Not important. But any other question? Uh, I'm in awe with whatever you are doing. So uh, there are no questions. I may be in touch with you to learn quite a lot. Anytime, from doctor. Anytime. Been a pleasure. You're coming all the because way. And the then questions your are many. So yeah, keep shooting. Keep shooting. Sure. This is all impromptu yeah. videos they do to hopefully inspire someone else. Yeah. But uh, pleasure having you, doctor. Yeah. Okay. Thank Absolutely. you very much, doctor. Be amazing. Oh, thank you.